Welcome to the PPBG Gamescast. My name is Steve. Rich. Mo. And we are the Passionate Playing Video Gamers. In today's episode, we are going to discuss a possible Atari console that the CEO announced that they're back in the hardware business. We'll give our reactions of what we think about Atari coming back. Then we'll talk about the Destiny 2 controversy of being 30 FPS for both Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro. See if there's a little something sketchy going on in the background. We'll give our opinions on that. But before we get into that, we'll talk about the Xbox One X and who the fuck is that console for? We've had a, over a week to try and comprehend that press conference from Microsoft. Hmm. So we'll give our thoughts of who is going to actually be marketed for this console and who's going to buy it besides me. You have one <laughs> one customer, and I'm admitting I'm total. a fucking idiot total. for buying it. One total. Even Phil Spencer won't buy it. But we will start with our E3 2017 awards. We have three categories. The PPBG, the very prestigious PPBG E3 awards. We are going to cover best cinematic trailer, biggest surprise, and our game of show. So let's start on a positive note. What was the biggest, your biggest surprise at E3 2017? We'll start with you, Mo. Biggest surprise? Oh, it was Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he was texting immediately. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's coming back to Sony! Yep, I was a schoolgirl. <laughs> so why Monster Hunter over the other surprises that they announced? It, it's been, um... It's been so long since they were on a on a bigger, you know, on the three con. That that the game is going on all consoles, just so everybody knows. But, you know, it's been so long since they've been on a like Xbox or PlayStation that uh, it's always been like just Nintendo three like the three DSs in particular, and it just I feel like the three DS never took advantage of the actual. Um, it's it the graphics are just too overhauled, and also the gameplay. I feel like the bigger consoles would have benefited more from those games. Um, I know that they tried to put it on the Wii uh, and Wii U. I know they were transitioned from that from the 3DS ones, but it, it didn't do it a lot of justice because all they did was just port it over. You know, They didn't really upgrade or do anything uh, technical with it. What was the last console it was on? Uh, PlayStation 2. It was on the PS2? Besides, besides the... The 3DS. The, and, the 3DS and, yeah, but and Wii. An actual and actual game like console. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you want to call the Wii, 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 the Wii okay. if you want to call it, I'm going rich. It. If you, rich, but the power of the Wii for a game like Monster Hunter. Yeah. So, but <laughs> <laughs> rich, no, guys. It, it started on PlayStation, so. <laughs> glad no, that's why, that's why I said. Finally getting some traction, he's finally learning. But I was like, uh, if you want to call that a console. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was PlayStation, PlayStation 2. Okay. And you're ready, 2018 Monster Hunter, I'm since ready. XX is only in... Ready. Japan, right? Yeah. Yeah, not coming here to the States. a big letdown. But I get the world, world one, so I'm happy. So your biggest surprise of E3 2017, Monster Hunter, coming to Rich. What was your biggest surprise? I don't want to be uh, repeating last week, and I don't want to be the downer, but I think everybody knows from last week what my biggest surprise was. Microsoft doesn't have a plan. That was my biggest surprise. So you actually thought they were going to have it? Yeah, I... They had I, shit together. I, again, I was the conservative about what the X would be, but I thought that they would have a very clear direction of where they were going and how they were going to get there, and they would present that to us, and I don't think that any of that is true. I don't think they even know, so of course they can't communicate that to their customers <laughs> or their developers, because they don't fucking know either. So that was my biggest surprise, is Microsoft the blind leading the, the blind. Yep. You know what? I thought they were gonna have their shit together too, and then I think all of us did. And yeah, that I'm was on the a same boat huge, as you. especially huge how they you know they jumped the gun because they didn't want the, the the paying public. They wanted the press. They wanted to make sure that they controlled the stories and all that kind of stuff. And they obviously had talked to some of their partners, which is why they were doing little over teases. over years. They've been working with them, but they no, but they were doing teases in other conferences oh, yeah. of watch the Microsoft one tomorrow or later on, and you'll see the the like the anthem thing and they didn't have there's no plan there's nothing and like mo kept saying world exclusive that doesn't mean xbox exclusive it just means it's the first time you saw the trailer yeah that's not an exclusive that's just the first time yeah marketing talk yeah 
World exclusive. No, yeah. PlayStation didn't do that when they announced Monster Hunter. Because they didn't have to. <laughs> There's a reason why I just was saying. So anti uh, my apparent uh, flag. But Microsoft was trying to hit that home, as in what yeah. exclusives do you have? Well, we'll just put it up on a little screen and say exclusive. Hey, look how many exclusives. See you, thieves. Yeah. Uh, Crackdown three. Um, so a few surprises that I had uh, E three. Not my top one, but number three for me was Metro Exodus. That was a big surprise. Looks very good. More than likely, it will not look that good when it is released, but it got me excited. Um, my number two biggest surprise, Skull and Bones from Ubisoft. That pirate game yeah. got me very excited. More than fucking Sea of Thieves, <laughs> which we talked last week. Mo and I will be doing Skull and Bones as pirates. Did you guys see the meme where they don't know how to eat a banana in that game? In mm, Sea of Thieves? No. He's carrying a banana, and he's got the end, you know, where you'd start peeling it towards him, and he keeps doing this, like you're just going to eat it with... It's not peeled or anything, you just... And that's how you <laughs> regain health. Like, great, that's a perfect thing to put in your gameplay. Eat a banana. shows that you haven't finished any part of this game, and you've been in development hell for how many years now? Apparently, Xbox thinks pirates don't give a shit. They <laughs> just keep it. But my biggest surprise is Bioware Anthem. I was actually really excited from that gameplay. Uh, I know the teaser didn't really do much from EA. I know you guys were really upset. Frustrated, I should say. Yep. Not upset. I would say more frustrated about it. Um, but they finally showed it. That's how they ended the Microsoft press conference. Oh. And... In Bioware, I trust, even though after the Mass Effect Andromeda debacle, yeah, I'll I'll give one one out. It's fine. I'll it's not the, just uh, one, but I get your point. I'll do the other Bioware, but Anthem uh, looks beautiful. I'm a shared universe, something I don't really partake in, uh, but I think that's something I might spend some hours. But it was very the, like a five to eight minute clip gameplay. You know, I went back and saw that gameplay, and at the very beginning when you're in the town. That guy's face is ugly. Mm-hmm. Like, very. Yeah. Like, you can tell something was amiss there. It just doesn't look... He's from the Andromeda Galaxy. Yeah. Do you, do you not know where I this just, is going? I was just... I was very <laughs> upset. By it. It's not his fault. It's, his face is yeah. tired. Shepard was in the background. <laughs> Shepard was in the background. He still lives. I could probably see... Yeah. He's in the universe. Yeah. But Anthem got me excited. We'll see more next year. Probably next fall is when it will be released. Uh, but that was my biggest surprise was Anthem at the Xbox press conference. So the next award, the PVVG E3 2017 award, best cinematic trailer. And Rich, best cinematic trailer. I'll be honest, I can't think of one. I was not blown away by anything this year. Um, I I would say probably Metro, because I don't think that was gameplay. It did really give me proof of concept. I did really like that. Kingdom Hearts, they were showing some some newer stuff, but I was already kind of sold on that, and it's kind of a trailer of gameplay. No. So, I don't really have anything that's actually like a trailer trailer. It was it was all, it all had some gameplay, and it all kind of just um, ran together. It looked like you were positive on Wolfenstein 2. Was that something? Yeah, like- but I consider that a lot of gameplay, so... There's, uh, there's a lot of cinematic stuff in there, too, but they were, they were showing a lot of uh, mechanics to it. That's how I took that. Okay, so I understand the confusion of it. Um, Such as, like, Spider-Man. I consider that more of a gameplay... Because that was, like, a 20-minute demo. Than than anything, more of a demo. Yeah. Yeah. Because some trailers, they usually have gameplay involved in it. Wolfenstein, you know, I would consider, you know, more of a a trailer and more of a cinematic. It's not just eight minutes of someone playing... But, but uh, I can I can see there was some gameplay with, just, the, with the Wolfenstein, but you weren't really blown I, away. I don't think there was really anything that was blowing away. I mean, it did, I'm not. It's not like I'm not buying anything or I'm not looking forward to stuff. But for the most part, the stuff I was looking forward to, I was already looking forward to. Yeah. You just either put a little bit of extra sprinkles on top of that ice cream or whatever. But that's there's nothing. Nothing. There's not really anything that wasn't somewhat on my radar that is now suddenly on my radar. Other than maybe Wolfenstein. You didn't, so. you didn't like the pig and the monkey? <laughs> Beyond Good and Evil? <laughs> the pig and the monkey? I was already down for Beyond Good and Evil. And Mitch Dwyer, he needs to eat his mug on, on camera. He, he said before, he tweeted out, that if they end the Ubisoft conference with Beyond Good and Evil 2, I will eat my mug live on camera. Who said that? Mitch Dwyer from uh, IGN. And... 
He didn't do it, but that's exactly uh, what happened. So everybody uh, on on net is uh, calling him out on it. Uh, so I'm gonna add to that voice. Do it, bitch. I mean, <laughs> Mitch. I meant Mitch. Ooh, uh-huh. it is on. I, I'm not a Mitch Dwyer fan. I I think he's kind of redundant. My best cinematic trailer. I'll go. For, my number two was actually a game that I'm not really going to purchase, but I was actually very impressed. Was The Evil Within Two? I really liked that trailer. It was very artistic design, and again, him in like the the white goo, and just how they did that entire trailer. It got me intrigued. It's just very busy fall, and I know you're, you're gonna uh, pick up the Evil Within too. Yep. But you're already on board before yep. that trailer. Yeah, I was. I was already it. team Evil Within. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that trailer I thought was was really cool. Uh, how they did that. But my favorite trailer is actually God of War. I think they had a lot they had to do from last year when they showed him with his son just walking through. It looked beautiful. It showed some gameplay, but the trailer that they showed was a mix of sort of what the story might be uh, of an idea, and it showed some of that gameplay as well in, in that trailer. And I really like the direction that they're taking it. It got me even more excited for the game, but to show more of how that gameplay is going to exist different from the, any other God of War game that we played. Because it's all been more action oriented, and the camera was more a little higher up. Yeah. Compared to this game, it's more behind the shoulder, and it got me really excited. So that was actually my favorite trailer. And Mo, what was your cinematic trailer of E3 this year? Mine was uh, the Evil Within. Um, I know that they try to show some gameplay in there for you, but it, it really didn't consist of a lot. It was more of, hey, you you already saw this in the fir- you saw some of these characters in the first game. Like the witch thing with the spider arms, it's it's she's creepy as shit, and they just showed her running at at the camera, and that's all they showed. But they didn't show what she actually does, which was one of my scare moments of that first fucking game. Like she's fucking terrifying, especially playing in the dark. Um, so it was mostly just cinematic, like the trailer. You know, that's all it, all it was. They were not a lot of gameplay. So um, I know how the game plays. It's good. I know it's gonna. They're going to make this the same way that they made the first one. I don't know where the storyline goes from there, though. So, we'll see. And what I'm, about State of Decay 2? I know you're excited. <laughs> Were you not impressed with that trailer? No, I wasn't. I thought it was okay. This is fine. Yeah, this is fine. Like, more of the same? but No, she gets, she gets saved from zombies, <laughs> and she gets in the back of the truck, yeah. and she's just doing this... This crap. Oh, and and like, what? The, the, the funny thing is, she's getting like there's like five or ten zombies like yeah. going at her, and then they're all doing like headshots around her. Yeah. Like four yeah. guys open up yeah. fire, shooting this whole crowd that's surrounding her, and she gets in the back of the truck, and she has like this is fine. She's all I'm not to rewatch it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her, her, her face is just like, no. it, but like you would not be that cool with what this. She had like a smiley face emoji, yeah. like oh. just go, yeah, it's weird. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not you're to about to get up. eaten. You're that happy. But Evil Within 2 is the yeah. best in my trailer. Yeah. All right, now the final PBBG E3 award, our game of show. And I will go first. My game of show, starting with, so my favorite game that I'm most looking forward to this fall is Shadow of War. Um, so that's not my game of show. I was looking for something that I wasn't expecting and got me more excited. So the one game I'm looking forward to the most is Shadow of War, but my game of show is Super Mario Odyssey. The reason why is that cap, I think, is a game changer. And how you're going to... And we'll get, we'll get to you, Rich. I think that is a game, cha- game changer in the gameplay that I did watch. I watched about 20 minutes of gameplay of Super Mario Odyssey, and even that trailer itself showed you what you can do three or four enemies of how you can use your cap and I thought it looked incredible and even the gameplay as well that they had on the show floor and the treehouse I did watch that treehouse where they did show that 20 minute gameplay demo of him in the city yeah and what he's able to do with the cap I got me even more excited something I wasn't expecting and I do think it will be a game changer for that game. Rich, what was your comment about Super Mario Odyssey? <laughs> oh, I was just going to make a joke about it. Did it count since they weren't actually there? But 
Yeah, they were on the show floor, oh, so okay. mm-hmm. I do have to amend my <laughs> my joke was just a, a subtle dig. I have to take it back because he did make a good point. Like the Wii was not a, a game console, right? <laughs> I didn't make that comment. Yeah, the, I think that's a a question for another time. Is the Wii a legit game? No, <laughs> answered. And Mo, what was your game of show? Uh, it's going to be God of War. Just what they. What they showed, uh, I'm excited to see where, where the story, how they connect this this time frame to the last, and how they showed a few things with the gameplay, how he fights, um, how they didn't involve the the little boy to transition so much that you're doing an escort mission. I, I love that they debunked that, in a way. Um, hopefully that's, they stay true to that, um, and we'll see. We'll see what happens from there, so... Because that's what everybody was worried about, was that it was going to be an escort mission from start to finish. An eight-hour-long escort like, mission. Not going to escort a, a son of a god, no. Or a demigod. But he's a god. Or son of a bitch. Dude, we don't know the mother. That's very judgmental. And Rich, what is your game of show? Um, I was going to say Far Cry, but that was they kind of released a lot of that stuff before, and then it was just a little bit extra on top, so I I, I don't want to give it there because they'd already kind of spoiled us the, the week or two before that. So I'm going to go with Spiderman. I think uh, that was the, an effective trailer. I think that they were telling me everything I needed to know as a, a fan of the games, as a fan of the property, fan of the comics. Yeah. They showed me enough. There's intriguing possibilities where the web swinging looked very similar to uh, Spider-Man 2, but it still looked like they had done some new things with the... Different web types and stuff, so... It was smooth. Yeah. That was very That smooth. was my number two. I had number two with Spider-Man. Holy shit. I think that blew everyone out yeah. of the water yeah. of those expectations. And I, I did research who Miles was. Oh, really? I had to do a... I, I've heard from, from you who, yeah. who Miles was. I had to research the, for yeah. then. Yeah. The fighting... You weren't there with It me. was the fighting mechanics that got me. I was just like, holy shit, where he, like... Where he hits that guy off the edge and he, like, grabs him back and yeah. he, like, saves him. That, that type of shit. I thought it was... Because like, he could have let him die. You yeah. gotta let him just go. No, yeah. Spider Man couldn't do that. Well, only the Man of Steel can do that. Not Superman, but the Man of Steel can do that. <laughs> There's a subtle distinction in my head. Fuck you, Zack Snyder. Too soon, man. Dude, I didn't make any kind of other comments <laughs> directly towards him and his directing capabilities. Nothing else about any stories come out about him or his family in the last month. Rich is on full throttle tonight. No, that's, I'm laid back. I don't know what you're talking about. Fuck you, Zack Snyder. <laughs> is, is Josh Whedon going to put in like an Avengers Easter egg in the background that no one will know? No. no. I think that he's putting in the Hall of Justice, though, is the rumor today. Yeah. We'll see. Well, maybe he can direct Han Solo. <laughs> wow. Can anybody direct Han Solo? <laughs> Harrison Ford cannot be direct, no. He just does his own thing and just he's, shows up. He's not in this movie. Oh. Huh. I'm not seeing it then. That would be funny if they put bookends. <laughs> It starts with it shows Han Solo at the at the very no like how they did the... the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. I remember oh. when I was a boy and <laughs> goes back and now it's River Phoenix. No, I don't. Anyways. No, never mind. So those are our E3 <laughs> awards. <laughs> All because of Zack Snyder. Way to go, Rich. Son of a bitch. Get a short topic. <laughs> I didn't make those movies. <laughs> I said, don't do this to us. I watch Watchmen. Don't do this to us. <laughs> those are our PBBG E3 awards. Please let us know in the comments below what your biggest surprise, what your best cinematic trailer, and what your game of show was for E3 this year. And what the worst moment of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was for you. Because I think it was the beginning, middle, and end. So, all the way through. The opening credits. Oh, that was pretty bad. Yeah. James Olsen. <laughs> 